Over the past five years, the world has witnessed a tremendous growth, of course, in GDP, and the trends in research investment, so to say, have kept space or pace with this increasing growth of GDP. So overall, I would argue that research and development expenditure have witnessed a very significant growth. This is, of course, a period of very high economic dynamism at the world level and that R&D expenditure has increased with something like 45% over five years, which is a, a huge amount. I think the trend which is most common to all countries in the world is, of course, the emergence of digital communication and how it affected science, communication, science networking between researchers at the global level. I think this is a feature which you come across now across the world. And, of course, within that feature, what is most remarkable is the growth of China. China is now, in relative terms, has overtaken, of course, Japan in terms of industrial production, but it's on the verge of actually overtaking also Europe in terms of private research and development expenditures. And it's likely to overtake in the coming five years also the US in terms of publications. So we see an, emo an emergence of the largest country in population size, in talent, in research talent, in researchers, etc., very quickly emerging as the leading country in science and research. Well, this, this phenomenon of rapid growth in China is, of course, a catching up phenomenon at this moment. So China is still lagging very much so in terms of the research and development intensity of its economic activities. Uh, what we call the R&D GDP ratio is still much lower than any of the triad countries. But in terms of the numbers of researchers, the human capital, of course, that is increasing very rapidly. A second feature, which is, of course, one shouldn't forget, is that China is, of course, a very unequal country in terms of regions. And so the regional disparities between these technological hotspots emerging, so to say, competing worldwide, networking internationally, is, of course, limited. It is limited to those couple of regions which are, so to say, nearly regions which are at the same level as they are in the US, in Europe or Japan. And of course, the last feature, which is of course still a weakness of the science system in China, is that the publications where one is catching up very rapidly are still publications which are cited much less than our publications from US scientists or from scientists in the US, I rather should say, or from European or Japanese countries. At the moment, the country, of course, which is making the most visible progress in science and technology is, of course, the Republic of Korea. There, the progress is absolutely impressive because it's a progress which is not just in terms of the total volume of research and development expenditures, but it's also a progress in terms of areas which are identified by the government, so to say, and which are given a sort of new overall mission, so to say, to science and technology in the Korean context. And that's, of course, ecological green technologies and sustainable development. Korea is really the example, I would say, for the rest of the world to follow in terms of a complete commitment of the authorities, the private sector, researchers individually, to sustainable development. The most radical difference with the report, I would say, five years ago, the UN UNESCO Science Report, is that today sustainable development is something which is affecting all science activities in all countries. So you observe that in even the least developed countries there is a strong interest in sustainable development in the observations of what one can do about it, in the scientific efforts, even minimal, will still be oriented towards how to maintain industrial production, agricultural production, in different changing environmental conditions, how to improve the energy efficiency of various production systems. So one observes, I would say, that this is the most remarkable difference with five years ago and the UNESCO Science Report of 2005.